Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So today we're going to talk about the things we can do to take a laptop you have that may be not as useful for your normal things you use it for and uh, give it a new lease on life. So, of course, me being me, we're going to make a router out of it, you know it. So, uh, we're basically going to talk about the parts we need for this and um, b from we're going to talk about the parts and then we're going to show after we get it installed somewhat how it'll look things like that so the first thing you're going to need of course is installation media so I just quick pulled up a list here on Amazon anything over four gigabytes in size will work um, for m most Linux distributions uh, for firewalling um, as well as like PFSense or uh, any of the other you know uh, smaller ones or the BSD based ones. Uh, from there though, <clears throat> once you have that, um, you're gonna want, since uh, laptops only have one RJ45 port, you're definitely gonna need more ports because each port in this case is gonna have an IP subnet. So if you have a laptop with just Wi-Fi in there and then one RJ45 port, you're only gonna have a LAN being your Wi-Fi, that's it, no wired connectivity and your WAN would be the only RJ45 port on there that goes into your modem. So we need these here. Now you can get these anywhere, but I just want you to know the part you need. You know, it's up to you to go find it, but I'm sure you can do that just fine. So you want to at least get gigabit here. A hundred megabit for some internet service at least is a, a bottleneck and even if it isn't a bottleneck now in a few more years it may become one so I would just go ahead and get gigabit um, they're fairly, fairly affordable now but uh, <clears throat> keep in mind though don't um, do something like this if you have like a gigabit internet connection or a 10 gigabit obviously um, just in case you didn't know because you definitely aren't going to get speeds like that through USB adapters. The USB bus in a computer, especially if it's an older laptop like USB 2.0, those uh, that spec of USB, it only goes about 480 megabits. And you have to think you have one flow of traffic coming in on your LAN, one flow going out on your WAN and coming back. So that 480 megabits is effectively cut in half at least, but you know it will be affected in uh, your real mix of traffic called the IMIX, IMIX. Um, that's gonna really take a hit. And on top of that, if you want to use encryption like with VPNs, that is gonna drop your performance. So don't you know depend on these for a lot of performance, but for most internet connections, this will be fine. So get what you get yourself one of the USB sticks. Get yourself one of these, and then uh, um, if you want more than two um, IP subnets on there, so two networks, you're gonna need at least one of these. But if you want more, you know, of course, get more. Some of these can do VLANs. I do know they can, um, but it does depend on the adapter, and don't depend on them being. Uh, 802.1Q capable because not all of them are. But after that, though, you we're gonna use Untangle in our case. Um, if you want to follow along, um, go ahead and get Untangle. So all you need to do is go to sign in, and of course I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and log in. Now I actually went right to get Untangle that uh, menu and went to software downloads. You know I didn't want to show the dashboard, of course. There's personal information on it. But from there, you want to download this ISO image. The OVA is actually, if you're running your router virtualized, this would be testing or in a very big network. You, you don't need to do this for this case. So we're just going to download this and hit Save File and hit OK. I've already downloaded it. So, um, But from there, though, we do need to write the ISO image onto an installation medium. So I will see you in a second. So in order to get it on there, we're going to search for Etcher and click the first link here. And we want to download it for Linux. So again, just save the file to your hard drive. 
and then we're going to go ahead and set that up. So this is the point you want to get your 4 gig uh, flash drive uh, handy, and we'll go ahead and uh, put it on, put a tangle on it. All right. So after you download that, you do want to unzip the file. So it's going to be um, as a zip file. You're just going to want to unzip that. And then after it is unzipped, it's going to unzip into your home directory. If you run, if you're on Linux and you run this command, you want to use a dot slash, and then the Belina. This here, the app image. You want to go ahead and run that. And after we run this, we're going to click Flash from File. So you want to select the ISO we just downloaded. The time of this recording, it's that, but the version number will change if you uh, use use this video in the future. And we're going to select Target. We want to select our 16 gig one in this case. Don't worry about the hidden one because that's usually your hard drive. You don't want to end up doing that. So we hit Select, and we want to Flash. And of course, make sure you put uh, your admin password in. And I'll see you when this finishes. Now you don't have to, but you can let it validate the uh, flash. You can skip it, but it's uh, good to know that it flashed right, so you don't have any weird er installation errors or anything like that. Alright, there we go. It's uh, successfully flashed. So now we're going to go ahead. You just want to take the USB plug it into a USB port on your target laptop or whatever you have and then go through whatever installation process you have. I'm not going to cover the untangle installation process because it is very simple. Essentially you want one of those USB adapters or your onboard Ethernet to be the LAN and you want one of them to be the WAN and you can apply that concept to anything you might be using to follow along. It doesn't matter if it's PFSense, it doesn't matter if it's IP Fire or Smoothwall Express or Untangle. The, the concept is the same. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, um, in off camera, I'm going to go ahead and install it. And then from there, we're going to just take a peek around the interface and then uh, we'll uh, be all, all ready to go with a repurposed laptop. So I'll see you there. Alright, so now we've went ahead and installed the system on our repurposed laptop. Now, I created a Wi-Fi network in this case, and um, here we're just connecting to it. And we're going to put in the password real quick. Alright, and uh, I made the LAN interface 192.168.2.1, uh, so we'll connect to that. And go ahead and log in. And this is our laptop now that has been turned into a router. So this is uh, basically how ours will look in this case. And again, if you use another system for this, it's the same concept. So it actually works really good. We have four gigs of RAM in this laptop. And uh, let's see, a 2.2 gigahertz dual core CPU. And uh, it's, it's good for repurposing those resources. Because doing certain things, like as a desktop use case, um, with this particular laptop, the, it, in time they get a little more lagging and um, less effective. So it's really good to be able to take the resources there and repurpose them to be uh, for routing and firewalling. It actually is really good for that. Because more of the resources are dedicated to one task. So let's look at how the interfaces are set up. So in this case, I have the Wi-Fi card in the laptop. And I have just configured it as a wireless access point. So I just put the card in what's called master mode. This is what your Wi-Fi routers have in them, just a card that broadcasts that signal. Now, you just like USB bus speed, the speed of your wireless network when you're using a laptop for that purpose um, depends on the generation of Wi-Fi cards you use. If you use, in my case, an 802.11b uh, card, it's going to be much slower than, say, if you use an 802.11n or even an AC generation card. So, just like uh, you know, 
d different parts and different generations, you can either you know speed it up to some extent or create bottlenecks. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're doing things like this. But all we've done is just address this card with its IP address and with its wireless configuration. Now it also you know serves a DHCP as well. So this does everything that your Wi-Fi router does. The difference is this is x86 based hardware so it's much more extensible as far as adding resources to it whereas with a Wi-Fi router that's what um, is called an embedded system essentially the software and hardware in that type of system it's much more inflexible you can't extend it as uh, easily as something like a laptop and another thing to keep in mind with a laptop is that you have things like a built-in UPS because you have that battery in there so if the power goes out it will actually last an hour or so you have a built-in keyboard and monitor as well so there are quite a few advantages of doing this now the last thing I want to talk about is if uh, we get that USB to Ethernet dongle and we're able to <clears throat> go ahead and put that in there as another network in that case if you want your Wi-Fi card and that USB to Ethernet adapter you want those to be on the same IP network you have to bridge them so we would have another this IP subnet would be on the USB adapter and then we would go into the Wi-Fi card if you have one and select bridge bridged and then you would put it as your internal but this way whether you are connected via Wi-Fi or you are on the ports uh, in the machine the Ethernet port and you can even connect that USB adapter out to a switch whether you connect to any of that you are on the same IP network and that's what Wi-Fi routers do they just bridge the switch ports and the Wi-Fi radio together but with something like this you have all of that flexibility and you're able to make that laptop last a little bit longer before you may have to get rid of it okay one other thing I want to quick show you is under troubleshooting we're just gonna test the speed of the connection just to give you a sense of the fact that it's an old laptop but you can still get quite a bit of speed through the machine so once this is done here alright so even with that type of laptop we get 25.6 megabytes per second so that is plenty of bandwidth for most internet services but uh, yeah with all that I do hope you enjoyed this and as always it's Tyler with T-Tech